This has been an incredibly difficult and upsetting couple of weeks. Alton Sterling and Philando Castile had their lives taken away by the police just over a week ago, and then just when it seemed like this would be the thing that led to meaningful change, that all the peaceful protests that were being held would actually amount to something, things only escalated further with the killing of police officers in Dallas. And now, just today, there's been another shooting of police officers in Baton Rouge. Now this has been incredibly upsetting for a lot of parties. It has inflamed emotions among a lot of people, but there's one thing that I think needs to be made particularly clear. Micah Xavier Johnson was not representative of the Black Lives Matter movement. And while he may have had racial motivations for what he did, it's also true that he would not have been able to accomplish what he did if he had not had legal access to such high caliber weapons. But then there are some people out there who not only were silent or defensive after the deaths of Alton Sterling and Philando Castile, but came out of the woodwork after the Dallas shooting, blamed Black Lives Matter for it, and then tried to shift the conversation away from systemic racism, which, if all lives really do matter, is a problem for everyone in this country. So, while I'm no expert on anything, one thing I can do is show you the statements of five of these ignorant motherfuckers, explain what's wrong with them, and maybe help you prevent making the same mistakes that they did. This is Deadbeat Roundup. Howdy gang, before I get too far into this, I just want to address the title for a little bit. This is a Deadbeat Roundup for All Lives Matter. And there's been a lot of controversy about how a phrase as seemingly innocuous as All Lives Matter could be considered contentious. And so, uh, I'm going to try to explain it the best way that I can, but there's already a lot of good explanations on Facebook and Reddit and that sort of thing, so I'll try to do a simple one. So, people say all lives matter in direct response to black lives matter, but people say black lives matter in direct response to injustices faced within the black community. So imagine that you've experienced an injustice. Maybe you got two Chick-fil-A sauces instead of three from the cashier, and I've been there, believe me, that is an injustice. So you go up to the counter and you say, excuse me, um, I'd like to get what I ordered, please. And then the cashier is like, huh, everybody should get what they ordered. And then you're like, okay, uh, yes, I agree with that in principle, but I haven't gotten what I ordered, so may I please have what I ordered? And then the cashier blocks you on Twitter. Uh, the point is that just because you're saying black lives matter doesn't imply that all lives don't matter, but then when you respond to black lives matter by saying all lives matter, you're undermining and dismissing the fact that black people have to face certain levels of discrimination and injustices that are not true in other communities. Just like if you go up to the counter and say, excuse me, I'd like what I ordered, that doesn't mean you want everyone else to have to get tartar sauce on their burgers instead of ketchup. I haven't forgotten Whataburger on Guadalupe. We got you covered. Anyway, I'm from Houston, Texas, so while I do have a certain amount of emotional distance from the attacks, there are a lot of ways that it does hit close to home. And unfortunately, one of those ways is that both I and the people of Dallas share some shitty fucking elected officials. Texas Senator and Uncanny Valley Wikipedia photo Ted Cruz made no statement after the deaths of Alton Sterling nor Philando Castile, but he did appear on Glenn Beck's radio show after the Dallas shootings. Now, Dallas is in Texas, so that could have something to do with it. We already know that Ted Cruz is more of a robotic iguana wrapped in cookie dough than an actual human being, so it could be that he's only programmed to have empathy for people in his home state. Let's see how this conversation with Glenn Beck goes. Uh, we're seeing... Um, people feeling powerless and they feel like they don't, they don't, that justice is not being done. Uh, I could say that I felt that yesterday. Holy sh Glenn Beck is actually about to address Alton Sterling and Philando Castile. That's what all these protests have been about. No justice, no peace. Uh, I could say that I felt that yesterday with, with um, Hillary Clinton. How, where is justice? Really? The FBI not recommending an indictment for Hillary Clinton's private email server is the most directly connected act of injustice that happened the day before? Even though it happened three days before? There wasn't some parallel incident that actually happened the day before involving civilians and the police? Or two? Fine. Okay. I guess this is what we're doing. Ted? Just a few weeks ago, a self-professed ISIS terrorist murdering 49 people and wounding another 50 in Orlando. 
Okay, we're bringing this up now. We're not going to humanize the two dead black civilians by saying their names. Why would we? We can't blame their deaths on an organization that isn't politically palatable to oppose because that would require a spine. And as we already discussed, uh, iguana, cookie dough, robot, etc, etc. So then, what connects these two other incidents? One man was able to kill 49 people in an Orlando nightclub, and another man was able to snipe several police officers from a faraway vantage point, and then had to be taken out with a bomb. What could be the connecting factor between these two people that gave them the power to accomplish these things? I'll give you a hint, it rhymes with schmeagly, schmacquired, schmowerful schweppens. Murder is wrong, and, and it should not be a partisan issue. That's it! You solved the puzzle! Murder is wrong! That's the reason all this stuff has been happening. People aren't really clear on that point. Once we start teaching our kids in schools that murder is wrong more, then we'll solve the problem. The problem isn't that murder is wrong. The problem is that murder is easy. Whether you're affiliated with ISIS, or you want to kill a bunch of police officers, or if you're feeling threatened by a black man reaching for his wallet, it is far too easy to acquire and use weapons, which are capable of, and specifically designed for, killing as many people as possible. And Ted Cruz, of all people, should be aware of this. But while many Americans in the last year have become intimately familiar with the personification of bad Ayn Rand fan fiction that is Ted Cruz, most people have not yet familiarized themselves with the Drudge Report comment section in a suit and Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. Now, Lieutenant Governor, much like Vice President of your high school's chapter of the National Honor Society, is a mostly meaningless position that is usually filled by some disgruntled person who thinks they have something to prove. Speaking of being bitter and thinking you have something to prove, Dan Patrick appeared on Fox News to talk about what ultimately caused the Dallas shooting. And I do blame um, people on social media. Yes, social media is to blame. It's not the fact that in Texas there are no laws prohibiting the purchase of any firearm other than a handgun. It's f***ing Instagram's fault. Maybe the Dallas Police Department just never responded to Mike Xavier Johnson's LinkedIn requests. Now, of course, I'm acting a little bit naive here for the joke. Clearly, Dan Patrick is implying that on social media, people were spewing racial hatred, and that caused the attack. But let's be real. They would not have had to do that in the first place. There were two different shootings of two different black men, both caught on camera, both by police, within 24 hours. And then on top of that, we have a city where it's extremely easy to get a powerful firearm and millions of people. How unlikely is it that something like this would happen? But no, it was probably a retweet of squinting Scooby-Doo that was the last straw. Now you may have heard that the Dallas shooting was the deadliest day for American police officers since 9-11, and that's true. But somewhere out there, someone just heard that last part, 9-11, and his ears perked up, he came out of his burrow, saw his shadow, and declared six more weeks of Sunday talk show appearances. A black will die 1% or less at the hands of the police and 99% at the hands of a civilian, most often another black. All right, Rudy, I'll bite. What the f is a black? I mean, are we talking about coffee, uh, phones, masses? Isn't it interesting that the same people who have trouble putting the word black before lives matter also seem to have trouble describing them as people? On the black side, you've got to teach your children to be respectful to the police and you've got to teach your children that the real danger to them is not the police, the real danger to them, 99 out of 100 times, 9,900 out of 1,000 times, or other black kids who are going to kill them. That's the way they're going to die. Well, stop and frisk me and call me a threat to society. You figured it out. It's not that systemic poverty in the black community has caused them to be a larger target for law enforcement as well as more subjected to crime in general. And it's also not that because of de facto segregation, if someone kills you that lives near you, they're going to happen to be the same race as you. No, that's not true at all. It's just that black kids inherently want to kill people and black mothers are not sitting them down and being like, hey, quit it. Any other nuggets of wisdom? And when you say black lives matter, that's inherently racist. Well, I think there are- Black lives would... matter, white lives matter, Asian lives matter, Hispanic lives matter. That's anti-American and it's racist. Rudy, 
Okay, uh, you weren't here earlier, so I need to rephrase this in terms you can understand. Okay, uh, when people say never forget 9-11, that doesn't mean that you should forget about everything else that's ever happened, become a shell of your former self, and just rely on the fact that 9-11 happened to keep yourself relevant. But then I guess you never got that memo. Former representative and current talk radio host Joe Walsh was very concerned about the killings that happened last week. But it just so happens that the only ones he commented on were, um, the ones that shared his skin tone. I shall now read the tweet heard round the world. Three Dallas cops killed. Seven wounded. This is now war. Watch out, Obama. Watch out, Black Lives Matter punks. Real America is coming after you. Wow! Joe Walsh packed so many horrible things into just 136 characters. Okay, I'm gonna try to address each of them individually. Watch out, Obama. Congressman! Now, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but, uh, in this country, we have something called, uh, what do you call them, uh, the federal laws there. Like the kind you were supposed to write while you were in office. And under United States Code, Title 18, Section 871, Wikipedia, making any threat to the life of the President of the United States is a Class E felony punishable by up to four years in prison. So to put it in terms that Joe Walsh can understand, that's about twice as long as the American people were willing to keep him in office. But would the punishment really fit the crime? I mean, four years for a tweet? That would be like getting 20 years for jaywalking, or the death penalty for reaching for your wallet. Watch out, Black Lives Matter punks. Now, is it really necessary to use words like punks or thugs or ne'er-do-wells in situations like this? Because I feel like the intentions of people like this would be a lot clearer if we replaced words like ne'er-do-wells with another word that starts with N. Finally, real America is coming after you. Okay, where the f is real America? Is it just the states that voted for McCain in 2008? Is it just the white parts of the country? Is it located in a secret vault in the back of a cracker barrel? Look, Joe, um, it's not just unethical to declare war on people who believe that black lives matter. It's also unnecessary because Certain members of our law enforcement have made it very clear that they're way ahead of you on that one. So now we move on from disgraceful conservatives who have held elected office to a disgraceful conservative who has not even done that. The Blaze anchor and Elizabeth Hasselbeck slash Elizabeth Pran slash Dana Perino stunt double Tommy Laren is a 23-year-old woman who really knows how to put things into perspective. When she spoke about the death of Philando Castile, she made sure to stick to the facts. He didn't appear to resist arrest. He didn't show signs of aggression or noncompliance. He wasn't pulled over on a man with a gun or other dangerous tip. His record is rather clean with just a few minor offenses. He carried a gun and was licensed to do so. All we have to go on is the video. So yes, we need to wait to see what the St. Anthony Police Department and the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension come up with. But here's the deal. These are the kind of incidents that need to be at the forefront. These, the ones that are unexplainable and what, from what we can tell, unjustifiable. When people like me say blue lives matter, that doesn't mean we believe the police are never in the wrong. Don't get it twisted. It means that we support due process and we lead with the facts of the case, not the narratives people concoct to whitewash the incident and the victim. That does absolutely no good. When you hold up convicted felons with rap sheets a mile long that also happen to violently resist arrest, you lose credibility. When you and why does some think the First Amendment is granted only to them and their movement? That somehow white people like me are forbidden from discussing what they deem black issues? That's balanced reporting, right? 10 seconds talking about the actual incident and 45 seconds chastising the people who want to see the officer held responsible for his actions. Now here's what I don't understand. Why does this make you so angry? Why is it that the reaction in the black community to this incident is what upsets you so much more than the death of a man whom, by all we can see, did absolutely everything you're supposed to do during an interaction with the police? No one is attacking your free speech. You have the right to spew whatever ignorant bullshit you want. But that same First Amendment that protects you also protects people in the black community who fight back when people of power, privilege, and influence say things that undermine their movement, undermine their fight for equality. 
And if free speech goes both ways. So if you're not racist, why does that bother you so much? But you know what? Maybe Tommy Lahren is just super principled about waiting for all the facts to come in. If the situation were reversed, maybe if there was a black shooter, then she'd do the same thing. She'd wait for the facts. She wouldn't jump to any conclusions. Like with the Dallas shooting when she tweeted, meet the new KKK. They call themselves Black Lives Matter, but make no mistake, their goals are far from equality. Well, there you have it. Black Lives Matter is the new KKK. Which makes sense. People like Tommy Lahren are clearly being the most persecuted out of anyone in today's society. There's no such thing as white privilege. After all, would someone with white privilege get her own talk show immediately after graduating college? After clawing her way to the top of University of Nevada at Las Vegas? A school so prestigious that the US News and World Report doesn't even reveal its ranking? A school so exclusive that it only accepts 86.9% of its applicants, meaning that it's slightly more exclusive than one I post on Facebook, hey, does anybody want to see the secret life of pets with me? The last thing I want to address when it comes to Tommy's tumultuous Twitter is this tantalizingly tenuous tweet. She quoted a tweet that says, Peaceful protests don't do shit. I'm glad them Dallas officers got shot, they see how it feel. With the comment, Somehow this shit is acceptable to post, but speaking out against your war on cops is racist. Bullshit. Hashtag Dallas PD. It seems like a fair point, Tommy, but there's a big difference between what you say and what Ricky Got Swag underscore says. You have 173,000 Twitter followers. Ricky Got Swag underscore has 2,000. You have your own talk show. Ricky Got Swag underscore does not. Ricky Got Swag underscore has been repudiated by many people in the Black Lives Matter community. But your views are that of a mainstream conservative, shared by many powerful people, including a former mayor of New York and a current senator from Texas. So, believe it or not, you have to be held more accountable than Ricky Got Swag underscore. Yes, it's fucked up that a dude on Twitter said this shit. But people like him aren't wearing the uniforms. People like him aren't hosting talk shows. People like him aren't writing legislation. But people like you are. People like you, who are consistently silent or even defensive of police officers every single time that a black person is killed during what's supposed to be a routine altercation. And then point out the criminal record of the dead guys if that somehow justifies his untimely death. And then compare Black Lives Matter directly to the KKK as if they're somehow equivalent. And then, say that the actions of a single black gunman are representative of an entire movement, but that all the police officers who are killing black people across the country are a bunch of bad eggs. You are the people in power, not Ricky Got Swag underscore. And that's the difference. There is not a single mainstream voice who believes that innocent police officers deserve to be killed. But you and a majority of governors, congressmen, Fox News hosts, and talk radio hosts don't seem to extend the same courtesy to the melanin inclined. Now why could that possibly be? This has been Deadbeat Roundup.